God, there's a lot of galenas here. Mm. We're cutting all these tomatoes in half so we can sun dry them. We've built a solar dehydrator. It's essentially just a rack with a fly screen over it so that we can dry everything out in the sun. I do have grand plans to make version two of the dehydrator, which will be more, more of a solar collector and a drying space that is protected from the sun. We're just cutting them in half and popping them on a stainless rack. And the mesh is just fly screen. I wonder how long these will take to dry in this heat. Oh, about three days, I reckon. It's kind of good timing, really, isn't it? Except that it's very hot to be doing this work. Yeah. So what are we going to do with all these sun-dried tomatoes? Well, we will use them in soups and stews and pasta sauces all winter. Tomatoes, 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 tomatoes. tomatoes, tomatoes. Right, it's definitely time for a break. Quick recap on our water, because many people have asked us how we're doing on our water levels since the water video. Today is the 31st of July. Let's see how the water level is doing. Uh -oh. oh, it's a long way down. Yeah, that's touching the water there. Right. Oh, God. So we've gone down. <gasps> Another meter. Another meter. That means we've got about 0.6 left. So it's not filling at the moment. And it is down to 0.65 meters, which gives us 4.6 cubic meters or 4,600 liters. Now I estimated we would use between six and 8,000 liters which is right, because that is 7.4 thousand litres since we last dipped it. So it doesn't look like the water is disappearing, but it's also not um, refilling. We're going to carry on using the water. Hopefully we do have 4,600 litres there. This is, of course, assuming that the bottom of the well is flat and it doesn't taper or get smaller as it goes towards the bottom. So what's your favorite way of preserving tomatoes? Fermenting them. Oh, I remember the first time you did that. <laughs> I went into the kitchen. You'd gone to work and I went in and I could hear something <laughs> bubbling. And I'm looking around thinking there was a leak, gas leak <coughs> and <laughs> Well, it was. <laughs> and then it was, it was like I took the lid off and it was alive. <laughs> so, fermenting tomatoes. We're going to squish some nice, big, juicy, ripe red tomatoes. We're just going to... If I get my hand in the jar, we're just going to squish them in the jar. We've done this before. It's one of our favourite ways of preserving a large amount of tomatoes. It uses no heat, no energy, and it preserves all the nutrients and vitamins and probiotics in the tomato. We'll check back on this jar tomorrow. That, that 
is going to produce a fantastic jar of tomato sauce which will keep for at least a year. This room is what we call the cold room because it's always cold. It's cut into the bedrock. That's what keeps it so cool. So in between the aubergines and the courgettes, we've got a pretty good row of beetroots. This is fantastic. We're gonna preserve these for the winter. So we're going to preserve these beetroots in moist sand in a box. We need to brush off any bits of earth and cut off the leaves. That's an incredibly sweet beetroot. Milder than the normal purple ones, but a good earthy beetroot flavour. All the leaves are going to go into the compost. You can eat the leaves. Maybe I'll save some actually. You can eat them like spinach. So we start in the box with a layer of sand in the bottom. Moist sand. Just spread it out a little bit. Sand. If the sand is too moist, too wet, then the beetroot will rot. If it's too dry, then the beets will dry up. So the next layer going in. So I'm going to put the beetroot in the box of sand just here. I'm going to get a breeze block, I think, and prop it up between this rock here and a breeze block where I'm crouched down. God, I'm not sure if I can lift this. I'm going to find a piece of wood to cover the box, stop it drying out too much. I think we'll have a rock on top of that to stop anything getting in. No shortage of rocks in here. And I brought the thermometer in to see what the temperature actually is. Many of you know who grow courgettes or zucchini. When they get going, you get a lot of them. We've been giving them away to everyone, all of our friends, everyone around here, neighbors. And it's got to the point where no one really wants more courgettes. We've got two spare racks for the dehydrator. So I'm gonna slice some courgettes, give them a quick wash first. And straight out the field, we'll adjust the, the old mandolin that we bought. Uh, Flea market in St. Petersburg. 
we're going to pop these on the racks and sprinkle a little bit of salt over them to help draw out the moisture then over the winter months when we don't have fresh courgettes we'll use this in soups and stews and things like that and they'll go fantastically a beautiful addition to any winter soup we can do these pretty close together because as soon as they start drying they're going to shrink a lot i expect the drying will be pretty quick in the high temperatures that we've got over the next few days the air is very dry as well back a few episodes ago we we dipped the well and we realized that the well was significantly lower than we we expected so it looks like our main big well is likely to dry out we've virtually stopped watering our vegetables we've reduced our watering we're only watering the trees that we want to establish but we do have another well Marie showed you the little well or pond as we call it when we did the water video and this pond or well is much lower down on our land and it the water levels don't go down very much okay we're not taking very much water out of it but the water level is almost maintained and so we believe that this well is refilling We're going to investigate the pond or small well in another episode so i'm back in the cold room some people call these root cellars those homesteading in america often build root cellars or have them it is an old way of preserving food and a very effective one come to see what temperature actually is in here i've left the thermometer in here to uh, stabilize at the moment it's 21 and a half degrees but we don't have a door on this room there's also a, a window well you can't really call it a window it's more like an arrow slit it's pretty cool root cellars need to be at a cool stable temperature we think we will achieve this in this room We put the, the wheels and the feet of the dehydrator in uh, yoghurt pots of water. This is to stop the ants from climbing up into the frame. This was a tip we got from Luke and Sarah's Off Grid Life. 